This is a patient. He came for a uh, regular upper GI endoscopy. Um, he had um, melena. And in the endoscopy, uh, duodenal ulcer was found. But we don't want to focus on the duodenum. We want to focus on the stomach. So uh, you see here uh, this uh, atrophic appearing uh, mucosa. And then you have such uh, elevated um, areas. Here is one area a little bit elevated. So we tried to do magnification endoscopy and we realized somehow that these areas have a somehow regular pattern. Like here. Then we have this um, little bit inflammatory appearing area. So we did biopsy on the left side, on the right side. And then we also have here this uh, somehow um, a little bit uh, questionably depressed areas where we took biopsy three. So my question is now to you as experts, what do you expect as a diagnosis? Have you ever seen this or do you have any ideas? Okay, then we will ask the pathologist. <laughs> so basically, these two biopsies were taken from normal appearing uh, mucosa. And what you can see here is like mixed type mucosa with some oxyntic glands and otherwise antral differentiation. And you already can see here there's a mild infiltrate inflammatory lymphocytes and also some eosinophilic cells. This basically shows absolute inconspicuous oxyntic mucosa. On the next slide, you see basically this was the nodule of mucosa that was seen between atrophic mucosa. And what you can see by histology, this is already atrophic. You still see some oxyntic glands over here, but here they're basically gone. And we confirmed that this is actually uh, mucosa from the corpus using gastrin stain, and gastrin was completely negative. That's not shown here. What you also can see is you have cloudy pronounced infiltrate of lymphocytes, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and also quite a lot of eosinophilic granulocytes. Here you see the infiltrate quite a lot of plasma cells, eosinophiles. And this is now from the biopsies which was taken from the atrophic mucosa. And what you can see, basically, the oxyntic mucosa is gone. And in addition to the inflammatory infiltrate, you see now really scar tissue, which is pronounced subepithelial, you can see here. And you can also see here that actually the surface epithelium is gone. And we, if we look at this closer, you see that we have this really thickened collagen band with trapped inflammatory cells and trapped capillaries. And this is seen in Fangesen stain in the same location. So this is basically, it meets the definition of a collagenous gastritis. This was done from the bulbous duodeni where the patient before had an ulcer. And you can see here that basically the villi are completely gone. And you also see here this thickened collagen band and the, sh um, the surface epithelial lift, which lifts off, which is damaged. And again here, trapped capillaries and inflammatory cells and with the Fangesen stain. The remainder of the duodenum was absolutely normal. So you had normal villus architecture. You had no intraepithelial lymphocytes, so there was no 
in the coaching for our celiac sprue. So in uh, conclusion, our diagnosis was collagenous gastritis, which extends into the bulbous duodenum. We have inconspicuous mucosa in part two duodeni without indication or suspicion for celiac sprue. It was negative for helicobacter pylori, and also we had no elevation of IgG4. Also, ileum and colon mucosa was totally normal. Thank you very much. So, have you ever seen this? <laughs> <laughs> that makes us happy. <laughs> <laughs> Treatment of? I don't know. Uh, well, I firstly, you know, any malignant <coughs> potential or any risk, I, I don't know. I, I also never seen this kind of case. So, what, any, any symptom from the patient? He basically had abdominal pain, abdominal pain, abdominal pain. He's a young boy, he's just finishing his school today. He wants to go to the army, actually. And uh, never anything before, he didn't have any family history of autoimmune diseases, nothing. I thought it might have been an IgG4 autoimmune gastritis or even Crohn's disease, a bad one, but none of that. And uh, so I looked at the literature a little bit. I mean, there are 40 published cases, and they, they, <laughs> they everybody got PPI, and sure. I mean, I, I gave him only PPI, he also healed, I have to say, after, f after three weeks. And, uh, and then uh, they gave him, obviously, everybody got at some point steroids, but it was a hit and miss. Most of the people did not heal. I mean, maybe a third of them healed. Then some of them got immunosuppressants, everything you can imagine, but it really, nothing really works. I mean, uh, what can you say about 40 cases? So I don't know what to give him, but um, I just gonna give him PPIs for another three months or so or six months and I have a look and if it's not getting better, you know, it, I, I, the malignant potential is that what's, you know, with a chronic inflammation that was scares me a little bit. So I might give him immunosuppression afterwards, but I have no idea what. So I think, yeah, yeah, similar approach. So uh, there's no family history, right? The father, mother is no. nothing. So, but he's very young. So, and uh, with this uh, cholangitis uh, kind of gastritis uh, in the long run, I, I worry, but I don't know because it's so little number of cases, but I worry the development of uh, any early cancer. So may offer some surveillance endoscopy. So okay, what's your idea, Professor Hagi? I have no idea, unfortunately. I also didn't have any chance to looking at this kind of case. So okay. I will send him to Stefan regularly for his surveillance with underwater and everything he wants to do. So he'll, he'll pick up the early cancer. I'll treat him and he picks up the cancer. Okay, thank you very much.